He says, you know, I think I can have a raise. I said, a raise? I says, do you think you were worth 3000 to begin with? You're going around collecting money for me. I said, they're all giving it to you willingly. You don't have to rough anybody up. I said, these are all my stations. Everybody's working for me. I said, I do you a favor. Now you think you're worth more than the favor I gave you? That's how people, uh, their attitude sometimes. Why? Because he was counting my money. Hi everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. It is uh, Tuesday today, and yesterday uh, we had a good time with Mob Movie Monday and we covered A Bronx Tale, one of my favorite movies. I gave it a 10 out of 10 for authenticity. The storyline was great, acting was terrific, great movie. We covered some of the scenes, so if you want to look back at that, for those of you that are just tuning in, I think you'll enjoy it. You know, one of the things I didn't cover yesterday is, uh, is something that's interesting to me, that some of these movies have really a, a good lesson, not only for people in the mob, but for everybody. And, um, you know, a lot of these movies have a lesson. If you're looking closely enough, and when I watch one of these movies, I really look for that. The dialogue is important to me. The authenticity of the characters are important to me because that was my life. And I like to see it portrayed as it was in, uh, you know, in great part, at least. And, uh, you know, some of the things we can really learn, there's some lessons to be taken out. For instance, you know, in the movie Goodfellas, uh, the character Tommy DeSimone, let's be honest, he was a bully. And what happens to bullies in that life? The same thing that happened to Tommy, to Tommy DeSimone. Most of them don't last. And I think if you saw Goodfellas, you know what happened. He thought he was getting made. They walk him into a room. Boom. He didn't walk out again. And uh, that's because he was kind of a bully. He did some things that, you know, uh, you know, after a while it catches up with you. Same kind of character in Casino. Pesci plays it great, but the character he played, pretty much a bully. What happened to him in the end? He got killed. You know, people like that don't last. The same, for, you know, for Roy DeMeo and some of these other guys. Yeah, they make it for a time, but, you know, in the end they don't last because people don't want to deal with them. They had enough of that stuff. We don't need that. In that life, you know, you're better off being respectful for people, earning money, you know, getting yourself in, in, uh, in a right position where people like you, fear you to a degree, but like you more than fear you, and uh, you got a good shot to survive. And I think the same is true in life. Nobody likes a bully. At least uh, that's been my experience throughout my life. Nobody likes a guy that keeps throwing his chest out, bragging about himself, and bullying people. We don't like that. So there's some lessons to be learned out of these movies. In Bronx Tale in particular, there were some scenes there that I think gave a, a really good lesson. For instance, so there's one scene in particular in um, the Bronx Tale that we covered yesterday that had a lot of lessons mixed in. Now, if some of you have watched some of my prior vi uh, videos, you know that I talked about Machiavelli and how he was kind of the patron saint of the mob and how you know, we, we kind of uh, had the Machiavellian ideology in the mob where basically the end justifies the means. Whatever you need to do to maintain control and power, uh, you were able to do as long as to the outside world, you always appeared to have integrity and be upright and be honest, you know, like our government is operating. Watch for my book coming soon, A Mafia Democracy. You're going to see something that's going to startle you, but hopefully wake you up about our government. At any rate, so um, in this particular scene, Sonny is talking to Cologio. Cologio is upset, C, as they called him. Uh, he was upset because somebody owed him 20 bucks and kept ducking him for two weeks. And, Sonny, and uh, Cologio is upset about it. So he explains that to Sonny, and Sonny tells him, hey, what are you worried about? For 20 bucks, you bought the guy off. You don't ever have to deal with him again. You don't ever have to bother with him again. That's a good lesson. You know, sometimes when you lend money, you got to think about it. Who are you lending it to? Is this guy going to be a pest? Do you really think you're going to get the money back? There were so many times on the street, guys would come to me and ask me for a loan. I did it. I knew I was probably going to have a problem collecting, but I knew at that point they can never come back to me again. And it's almost so I bought them off, but I became the good guy. They can't walk around and say, hey, you know, he didn't give me the money. He's cheap. I gave him the money. It cost me a few bucks. When you're on the street and you're in a certain position, sometimes you got to act like that. 
you're better paying a guy off and he's out of your life. As far as money is concerned, you don't have to bother him anymore. So that was a very good lesson that Sonny gave C at that point in time. Another thing he started talking about I thought was great, um, fear versus love. I might have covered this in a little bit of a detail before, but I want to cover it more directly now. Sonny said that, because uh, C asked him, is it better to be feared or is it better to be loved? And Sonny said, well, it's great if you can have both, but that's pretty difficult. And I agree with that. It's, you know, it's kind of hard to be feared. I mean, really feared. I mean, you know, as a kid, you fear maybe uh, your mom and dad, if they're going to reprimand you for something to do wrong. But that's not a real fear. That's more a respect. You know, it's a, it's a childish thing. Uh, but you still love them. So you can have fear and love in that way. But on the, on the street, kind of difficult. Is it better to be feared or loved? And Sonny said, it's better to be feared. And he said, because fear lasts longer. I totally disagree with that. Totally disagree. That's not a true statement. The strongest emotion you can have uh, for somebody is love. Love lasts when it's really true love. Fear, not so much. And I'll give you a perfect example of that. You know, on the street when people were feared, you know, I don't want to mention names. You could talk about Gotti and Castellano and, and, and all the bosses and how they were feared. And so many of them met with the wrong fate, you know, didn't last. But forget that for a second. Uh, fear was big on the street. And rightfully so, because if you did the wrong thing, you suffered consequences. But did you really, you know, is, is that loyalty built on fear? Is that a strong loyalty? I don't think so, because I'll tell you why. In the early 80s, mid 80s, when the government started to um, uh, really use the racketeering law, which was a devastating law, when they really started to use the Bail Reform Act, which denied bail if you were a flight risk or you were a danger to the community, which most mobsters were one or the other, mostly a danger to the community, because every time we got locked up, most of the time, it was for a violent crime. That makes you a danger to the community. So you got no bail. Very hard to fight a case from inside rather than being outside. And then the Sentencing Reform Act, where they gave such stiff sentences, not like before, they abolished parole. So you got 20 years, you had to do 85 percent, 17, a lot of time. When they started to implement those things, what happened? The fear of the street was transferred to the fear of the government. And the loyalty was gone. So many guys turned informants. So many guys were putting other people away. Guys that were around a long time. Greg Scarpa, Grim Reaper, one of my guys. He was, in, he was in our family. I knew him well. We found out he was an informant for so many years. A lot of guys, I'm not going to go in through it and mention names because the government offered them protection. They didn't have to fear their mob guy anymore. It offered them the witness protection program. That was it. Decimated my life back in the 80s. So that wasn't real. But people, when you love somebody, Come on, you know it. You go to war for that person. You go to bat for that person. You know, so Sonny was wrong. And in the end, what happened to Sonny? He got killed. If you know the movie, we talked about it yesterday. He got killed. So yeah, he was feared on the street, but he got killed in the end because it wasn't a true loyalty uh, th that emotion was built on. So, um, but it's a great lesson. Remember, fear versus love, always take love, people. That's the emotion that you want. You want people to love you. You want them to respect you, a little bit different than fear, but you want them to love you. That's the right emotion to develop from people in your life. Um, you know, he also said in that, uh, uh, in that little sequence that they had that um, he was a reader of Machiavelli, again, patron saint, that in prison he read Machiavelli a lot. And one of the principles that Machiavelli told him was availability, to be available. And he said, you know what, see, I can live anywhere in the world, but I stay in my neighborhood. I want to be available. And he said, one of the reasons I want to be available, he said, because in case there's any trouble, he said, trouble is like cancer. When I see trouble, I want to stop it immediately, cut it out immediately. I agree with him on that. When you see trouble coming and there's any indication of it, you can deal with it right away, get rid of it. Me, people say, you want to hear the good news or the bad news? I always say, I want to hear the bad news first. Let me hear it. Let me deal with it if I can. And let's get rid of it and then go on to the good stuff. That's just how I operate. And I think it's the right way to operate. So that's another good lesson. Uh, trouble is like a cancer. When you see it coming, do your best to get rid of it if you can. Sometimes you can't. You got to let it play out. But when you can deal with it, deal with it as quickly as you possibly can. 
You know, um, I am a big follower uh, of the book of Proverbs. It's in the Bible. It's Old Testament. For those of you that don't believe, that's okay. But I'm going to say this because I am a believer. You know, Solomon was the king of Israel and a brilliant guy, very wealthy guy, very brilliant guy. And uh, God had asked him, according to the Bible, the Old Testament, uh, if he wanted anything. And he didn't want anything, basically. And God said, you know what? For something, because of the fact that you didn't ask for this, I'm going to gift you with being the most brilliant person in the world. He said, I'm going to make you brilliant. And Solomon was brilliant. And uh, his Proverbs, again, it doesn't matter if you're a person of faith or not. If you live in this world and you read the book of Proverbs to see some of the principles that he tells you to live by, amazing. I got to tell you this. And in reference to availability and being in your neighborhood and knowing your flock, especially in that life, Proverbs chapter 27, verse 23 says, Be sure you know the condition of your flock and give careful attention to your herds. You got to know who you're dealing with, people. On the street, you got to know the people that you're surrounding yourself with. You got to understand them. You got to know, you know, their true feelings about you. You got to keep some at a distance, some very close. Very, very important on the street. It's a matter of survival. And in, in life, it's the same thing. In business, it's the same thing. You got to know the condition of your flock. You got to know the people that you're hanging out with, because in many ways, you are who you hang out with. Very, very important. So I got that. I took that out of that little lesson there, uh, out of that scene, rather. Very, very important. Another thing Sonny said that I took a lesson from was that, you know, he said, you know, I'm funny. People laugh at my jokes. He says, you know, I might be funny, but I'm not that funny. In other words, because he was the guy in the neighborhood, because he was making people earn, and he even says that. He said, I make everybody around me earn money. He said, but not too much, because if I make them earn too much, then they think they, they don't need me anymore. And I'll tell you a story about that. You know, I was in the gas business. I know somebody's going to say, oh, if Michael don't talk gas, it isn't Michael. But can't help it. It was a major part of my thing back then. But I had a guy around me, very, very close to me. His name was Frankie, not Frankie G, another Frankie. And uh, he wasn't doing too well. And uh, I said to him, Frankie, you need a job? He says, yeah, sir, I'm going to give you a job. I want you to go around to all my gas stations and just collect the money. They're going to give you cash. They'll put it in a bag, whatever, and you bring it back to me. And for that, I'm going to pay you $3,000 a week. Great. He was happy. He did the job, did it well for maybe four, five, six, seven months. And he comes back to me and he says, hey, chief, you know, he says, uh, I'm doing a lot of work. He says, you know, I think I can have a raise. I said, a raise. I says, do you think you were worth 3000 to begin with? You're going around collecting money for me. I said, they're all giving it to you willingly. You don't have to rough anybody up. I said, these are all my stations. Everybody's working for me. I said, I do you a favor. Now you think you're worth more than the favor I gave you? That's how people, uh, their attitude sometimes. Why? Because he was counting my money. Got to be very, very careful. Know who you got in certain positions around you. That was very important on the street. If you're in business, just as important. You got to know the people you got working for you, the people that are your competitors, the people that your allies. Very important to know the mentality of the people that you have around you. And, um, you know, what Sonny said is true. Remember this. And this is a proverb. Proverbs 19.4 says, Wealth brings many friends, but a poor man's friends desert him. People, if you got nothing to offer people, sometimes it's, it's, it's terrible. They just leave you. They abandon you. But when they think that they can earn from you or you got something to give them or you're a benefit, well, you know what? You got many friends. Is it true? I don't think so. In my case, I know it wasn't. I'll give you another example of that. Yeah, I made a lot of people earn a lot of money around me. Very, very honest with you. And that's why I kind of rose in the ranks. I had a big crew, too many people around me. It turned out to be my downfall at some point. But um, I had taken a plea, you know that, to racketeering. I had a a racketeering case in Florida and in the Eastern District of Brooklyn with the feds. I took a plea there, and I had to go down to Florida to take a plea down there. So I was in federal custody. So I had 15 agents around me on the plane going there and back. On the way back, I was sitting with a bunch of the agents, and we were talking. They were saying, Michael, you know, now that it's over, they were surveilling me for so long. They said, let me ask you this. When we were at such and such a place, is this what you were really doing? And I was going back and forth with them. I figured, hey, it's all over. Let me answer some of their questions. And uh, I turned around to one guy and I was I was joking with him. I said, you know what? I beat you guys five times. 
I took a plea now because I was getting bored of winning so much. I figured, let me give you at least one win. Maybe you'll leave me alone. I was teasing him, right? And I'll never forget the agent. He looked at me and he said, Michael, not this time. You became a superstar and a lot of people were lining up because you were their ticket out of prison. I never forgot that because I was of no use anymore financially. So what was my other use to buy them out of prison? Boy, that stuck in my head. I never forgot that. And you know what? He was true. A lot of the people that I thought were solid around me, I wasn't that good of a judge, it seems, because a lot of them uh, kind of went down. They really did. So, you know, strong lesson. Be careful of the people you have around you. And if, you, if, if you're a benefit to people, they're going to like you. Is it true? Always understand, try to understand and try to reason why people are so close to you, why they're so friendly with you, what's really going on with them. When it matters, it, it should matter to you. So, um, you know, that's it. I think these are a couple of good lessons. And, uh, you know, I always like to leave a moral. I'm not here just to tell stories, people. But I think sometimes, you know, in life we need to get, you know, some good information so we know how to proceed. And I'm getting so many messages from all of you that are, that are struggling during this whole COVID time. Hopefully it's getting better. Hearing some bad news in New York that so many restaurants that uh, uh, have closed are going to remain closed. A lot of people are struggling in business so on. A lot of people are sending me messages that I'm trying to do my best to give advice when I can. But please understand, if I can't answer all of them, I get literally thousands of them across all the social media platforms. So we do the best we can with them. Well, that's it for today. Just a few short lessons, uh, maybe some words from wisdom that can help you out. And I do have to say this. I was very fortunate. You know that I'm a, a, a pretty prolific speaker. I speak 45 weeks out of the year normally. Been shut down this year because of COVID. But last week, I did have the uh, uh, pleasure of uh, visiting Indiana and doing a uh, mayor's prayer breakfast. It was great. We had 500 people there. Everybody practiced social distancing, but it was really good to be able to you know, give a message again and, and hopefully impact people in the right way. So that was great. Again, you know, subscriptions, I think we're just about over 200,000 in less than three months. People, you're terrific. And uh, believe me, it's very humbling to be able to offer you this kind of content and you people enjoy it so much. Thank you. Uh, next week, we got a surprise towards the end of the week. The big Bruce McNall uh, video interview is coming out. You're going to love that. On the 17th, I'm meeting with Daryl Strawberry here in, in California. We're going to uh, uh, have a nice sit down with Daryl. It's going to be great. Love Daryl Strawberry. Great comeback story. And uh, so keep subscribing. You keep getting the alerts. We're building up. It's going to be great. Uh, the television show is moving along. The book that I'm writing, Mafia Democracy, uh, we're making great progress with that. And uh, our coaching side is really building the community. People are uplifting so, so many uh, other people. So I really encourage you to join. It's free. The inner circle is a little bit more, but that's your choice. It's an option. But the community is great. Everybody holding each other up during these times has been terrific. Really building well over 5,000 people in it now. So that's it for the rest of the week. Be safe. Be healthy. God bless. See you next time.